Hi, um, I'm Nick Dooley, and I'm here on behalf of MMA Mania to interview my uh, very best friend, Misha Tate, two-time world champion. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. It's like a totally different setting than we're used to. It's like, we're normally we're just kicking it around the house in our pajamas, and now yeah. you're interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix and chill. Yeah, right? <laughs> um... So, how do you feel fighting in Madison Square Garden in New York City? Um, I mean, it's a huge moment for me. This is like, this is really groundbreaking, and it's not just like for, not just for the UFC, but you know, women's MMA in particular. I feel like we're really well represented on this card with three female fights, you know. And I just think for me, this is this is another really big moment for me. I've had a lot of big moments in my career. I've fought on a lot of really big cards. You know, I've even got to fight in the Saitama Arena in Japan. And now it just feels like it makes sense, you know, that I get to be here and be a part of this, but I'm very honored at the same time, so it's really cool. Um, so what other girl fights are on the card other than, than you and Raquel? Yeah, Liz Carmouche is fighting um, on the card, and also um, the, uh, the obviously the title fight, Joanna Jonjerichek, and um, drawing a blank on the other girl's name at the moment, uh, I forget how to say it. Okay. She's over... Okay. Can't remember. That's that's that terrible. But yeah, it's like it's a foreign name though. So, um, but it's a title fight for the 115 pound belt, and um, she, you know it should be a really good one. She actually um, fought Heather Joe Clark, um, that girl. So she's undefeated in the UFC, and I apologize that I cannot remember her name. But that is not a strong point of mine, <laughs> is being able to remember people's names. So it doesn't spread. I know it starts with a K. Kavitsky. It's so, yeah. Yeah, I can't say it. Again, I don't think I can say her last name. It took me forever to be able to say Young Jerichek. You know, that was that was a tongue twister for me. So, at least um, I'm on the right path. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what are your thoughts about fighting Raquel Pennington? Um, I'm actually just I'm super honored that the UFC would ask me to fight Raquel because I really think it makes a statement of where they think that I belong in the fact that Raquel is on a win streak, she's hot, she's up and coming, she's still ranked inside the top 10, and um, I think a lot of people really underestimate Raquel, like, I think they look at her and they're like, oh, you know, she's, you know, she's okay, or she's not, but, like, I've personally been able to, to witness Raquel training and co coach her since I was her coach on The Ultimate Fighter, and I know how, like, how good she is, like, how much she wants it, you know, and I know that she works hard in the practice room, and I think that she's tough to put away, so I think getting a win over someone that that's on her level like of coming up and, and making waves in the division you know she's someone who's on the rise you know it's for me as a veteran it's always good for me to like put a stop in front of someone who's coming up you know what I mean and I'm always you know someone who kind of still has a target on my back you know so I know that these that these girls that are coming up in the division they want to be able to take me out because they know that that's like that stepping stone to the title and for me to just be able to like put a stop to that, I think we'll, we'll make a big statement. So that's what I've got to do. I've got to shut, shut everyone out until I get back up to the title, you know, to get a title fight again. So what are your plans? Like, how do you see um, 2017? What are, you, what are you thinking about? I know it's hard, um, me being a fighter as well, um, to think ahead, but yeah. what would a perfect 2017 be? Um, you know, after this fight, I've, I want to take a little bit of time off, you know, not, not anything crazy, but I fought three fights in nine months and two of them were title fights, you know, so, and the last fight I broke my nose, so I spent, you know, the majority of my downtime recovering from that and then went straight into a training camp, which I'm stoked about. I'm honored to be here. I, I was pushing for this fight card. You know, you know me, I hate sitting on losses. Yep. I hate it. So I really want to get back in there and, and kind of wash that away, get back on the, in the win column. But after this, you know, I want to take probably, you know, I'm thinking about six months, you know, like maybe a May return or something like that so that I can have a little bit of time to just enjoy myself and travel and learn, you know, like it, you learn more outside of your training camp than you do in your training camp. When you're in training camp, it's like you pull the tools that you need specifically to win that fight and you don't really branch out a lot. You're not trying to learn a ton of new things. So when I take time off, I really feel like I get to get in the gym and I get to be playful and I get to expand my game so that I can like broad and everything and, and be a more well-rounded fighter the next time so I do want to take some time to do that I'm going to travel a little bit um, I will be a guest fighter in Australia for the oh, USC wow. Australia card yeah so that's going to be incredible yeah 
so I'm excited about that. But um, a perfect 2017 year, you want to get a, a few fights in and, and hopefully make a run for title in that time. You know, I think, like I said, putting a stop to Raquel says a lot. I think it helps solidify my position as the number one contender still. And um, yeah, I hope that maybe in 2017 I can make a run for the belt again. And speaking of title runs, um, how do you see Amanda Nunes and Ronda Rousey playing out? And yeah, that's interesting so I you know I have been asked that question a few times and I'm not exactly sure how to break it down with Amanda you know she's very aggressive and I feel like if anybody can match Rhonda's pace in the first round it would be Amanda she can push a pace like nobody's business so I think that you know she will fight fire with fire and she can hit really really hard you know she has a bit of a judo background herself she's taller you know she's about the same height as Holly was so I could definitely see that you know, anti judo the same way that Holly did, you know, like picking Rhonda up when she tries to throw her and stuff like that could also work to Amanda's advantage. And she's also, you know, she's skilled on the ground too. She's, I believe she's a brown or a black belt in jiu jitsu. Um, she's a black belt. A black belt, yeah. So, I mean, she's, you know, she's good in every area and she hits really hard. But then you got to wonder where Rhonda is at. Like, what kind of athlete are we going to get back out of her? You know, what kind of doubts does she have in mind, her mind after getting knocked out? Why did she take such a long layoff? And is she really coming back because she wants to or because she's obligated to? Or maybe for the money. Yeah, know? maybe for the money, you know. I mean, that's a possibility too. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that she kind of, you know, said that she would. And, you know, so I think she's, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I really, I, I do know that she's speaking about retirement. And I do know she took a really long time off. Those are, you know, things that I just, I can't speak for on her app because I don't relate to that, you know. Right. And um, so, yeah, it just makes you wonder a little bit. I do believe that if your heart's not 100% into this sport, though, that it's a very dangerous game to play. I would have to agree with you on that. <laughs> yeah, so we've yeah. got to wonder a little bit. Yeah, I do wonder about that. About a good friend of both of ours, Juliana Benya. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about her in the division? And, you know, it's like having her in the division and being friends with her as well. Yeah, Juliana is definitely the closest to me out of anyone in the division, you know, and I'm very excited to see her doing so well. And, and I have to say, honestly, I feel like she's done enough to earn a title shot. I think she's won enough. She's undefeated in the UFC. Um, she's the first female Ultimate Fighter winner. You know, she's on my team, and she, she beat everyone in, you know, in there and, you know, won the Ultimate Fighter. And, and um, yeah, I think she's done enough, but, you know, I'm also not, I'm not the matchmaker. I'm not, you know, UFC. I don't make those decisions. You know, that's my personal opinion. Uh, I think that she could definitely be up, you know, she's in that mix. And um, the scary part is, is like that we really are kind of getting close to each other and neck and neck. And like, we would promise each other we would not fight each other unless it was for a title fight. So, you know, so far so good. I, we've made that pretty clear to the UFC. Obviously, I don't, I don't want that to happen, but... If she holds the belt or if I hold the belt, I mean, then it's got to, you know what I mean? Business is business, then you've got to kind of put the friendship aside. And I think we both understand that the bigger picture in that is, you know, is the belt. You know, that's that means more to us, you know, than, than anything. And it, and it would be out of respect that we would give each other that opportunity and, you know, n nothing else than that, you know, it would be kind of weird, but, <laughs> you know, once, you know me, once the cage door closes, though, it's just like, I take the motion out of it, I don't have to hate someone to fight them, right. and, um, yeah, it might be a little bit weird, but it's also a little bit weird with Raquel, though, because it's like, you know, out of all the people that I've ever fought, she probably would be the closest to me that I've ever been matched up against, so, but, again, it's business. When the cage door closes, you know, I don't have to hate someone to, to, to play tennis with them, you know, I mean, it's kind yeah. of the same, for me, it's the same thing, you know, I don't, I don't kind of equate it, like, as a violence thing or an anger thing, you know, to me, it's a sport, it's mixed martial arts, it's something that I've been working a really long time, it just happens to be hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, you know, when you have the bell, or when you're fighting for the bell, it's when two fighters have made the path and beat everybody else, and yeah. it's, to be the best, which I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. I know we're not in the same weight class, but I think by two. I know I would hate that. I'd be like, no. yeah, that would be terrible. I would not want to do that. <laughs> we would be like uh, Rocky and Apollo, like in the hospital, like right. well, actually, probably just me. <laughs> That's my, only because my you're little. It's only because yeah, you're little. One hundred five punches. Yeah. Well, thank goodness you're like way smaller than me. You're like a little munchkin. That's okay. Gustavo. <laughs> Gustavo. Gustavo Lopez, yeah. training partner. Yeah, 
well, my training partner, you help coach him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, because that was amazing. I mean, he helps me with, he, he, you know, it's mutual. Like, if I see something that I can, you know, point out to him and, you know, make, make some constructive criticism, that's great. But he, um, he's obviously at stellar wrestling, you know, wrestles at Menlo and, like, really, really good there. So I pick his brain a lot when it comes to wrestling, you know. And um, his grappling is getting really, really good, and he's working very hard on his striking. So he's really becoming very well-rounded, and, I mean, uh, I know the last fight didn't go his way, but I, well, my training partner, you help coach him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, because that was amazing. I mean, he helps me with, he, he, you know, it's mutual. Like, if I see something that I can, you know, point out to him and, you know, make, make some constructive criticism, that's great. But he also helps me a lot, too, you know. So um, he's obviously at stellar wrestling, you know, wrestles at Menlo and, like, really, really good there. So I pick his brain a lot when it comes to wrestling, you know. And um, his grappling is getting really, really good, and he's working very hard in the striking. So he's really becoming very well-rounded and, I mean, uh, I know the last fight didn't go his way, but I thought it was a really, really good fight. And I also know that um, his opponent didn't make weight. So, I mean, people don't understand that, a, a, like, weight matters. That's why weight classes are only five pounds, you know, a lot of, like in wrestling, five pounds apart, typically. Because five pounds does make a big difference, you know. Right. And, and especially when, if you didn't have to push that hard to exert yourself to lose that extra two, two and a half pounds, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you come in with a, a, an advantage in my in my mind. So um, I think that that rematch needs to happen and both, you know, both fighters need to make weight. Um, or, you know, it's he's got to fight someone else for the belt, you know, because his opponent didn't make the weight, so he did not capture the title, title even though, you know, he did it. Awesome. Thanks. Like I tell everyone, I'm like, man, you don't know, like, Misha's a great fighter, and she's a warrior, but she's a superhero, like, real-life superhero. And uh, is there any superheroes that you would want to be or any superpower that you would want? That's so interesting. Yeah, like, if, if I could have a superpower, I'd want to time travel just because I'm always late. <laughs> <laughs> like always so like like if or like or maybe not even necessarily time travel not necessarily like go back in the past but like be able to get somewhere like now like you know one second like I need to be there one second I'm there you know that would be really cool I'm always late to things so I'm working on it though I'm getting better with my time management skills but it's like anything it takes like training and work at it so that's what I would Misha we have a couple fan questions and the, so far, the most popular question is, what about Cyborg? Catch weight. Once you teased it, now no one's going to let it go. What do you think? Cyborg in 2017? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, people always ask me, would you do it? And I say, yeah, like, why wouldn't I, you know? Was that a catch weight? And I mean, I just, it's not like, like, I just, I don't question my, my heart or ability or determination to, like, be able to go out there and fight Cyborg. Um, so it, if it would happen, then yes, but it's not me calling out Cyborg. I'm not like, oh, I'm calling her out. Like, but am I afraid to fight her? No, absolutely not. I've already, already been, like, had the worst things that could ever happen, like, in this sport happened to me, and I'm still here, so I ain't going anywhere. And if she wants to fight at 140, and that's what the UFC wants, and that's what the fans want, then I will step up and do it. It's not a question of, of that at all. So, um, you know, if that's what happens, great. If she stays at 145, wish her the best. If she wants to drop to 135 and do that, then cool. But um, I'm down for whatever. I don't, you know, it doesn't bother me. We also have a question coming in. What are your plans for your career after UFC and MMA? Oh, big picture, big picture. Um, you know, I want to travel, continue to travel a lot. But um, as far as work goes, you know, I'm planning on continuing my relationship with Fox and uh, doing more analyst work. And, um, yeah, I want to travel the world, probably go on some missionary things and, you know, just give back a little bit. I feel like... I've been so busy and it's it's hard sometimes as a full-time fighter and doing everything and doing all these interviews like to get back as much as I would like to but um, yeah it's definitely like a plan of mine to be able to to go out and reach out to people that are less fortunate you know once I don't have to be so like focused on dieting and making weight and you know media and fighting and all that stuff and like always staying ready you know you've always got to stay ready because you never know what's going to pop up so um, yeah with that being said that's what's kind of and your prediction for Rousey versus Nunez, how does it end? I don't have a prediction for that. I know that's a question that I've been getting asked a lot, and Nick Dilley already kind of touched on that, so that's basically going to be the same answer that I gave her. And Nick, when are you getting that Kira Batara rematch? I don't know. I was told I have to fight twice, 
I'm gonna fight twice, win those, and then I'm coming after her.